Hey everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a short tutorial about how to make a news site based on PHP and MySQL that will look something like this by the end of the first few tutorials. Uh, this is something I did in my last attempt at recording this, but if you want a more full featured example, go to protonjohn.com. You can see the news pieces have a, had a, have a headline, an article, who wrote it, when they wrote it, number of comments, and number of views. And that's basically what I want to try to recreate in this tutorial. Now, if you want to do this yourself, you'll probably need to install two things on your computer. The first one is called WAMP Server, and that's available at WAMPserver.com, and then click on the English flag to get it in English, and this basically lets you run PHP and MySQL on your local computer. Without this installed, you won't be able to test that on your computer. You'll have to upload it to a server in, in order to test thing. The other thing I think you should get is called Notepad++. It's a, both of these tools are free, by the way. Um, this is a basically a text editor which has syntax highlighting, and that's a really useful tool if you're coding in PHP. So I strongly recommend you get this um, and use it while we're working on this. However, in the first part of this tutorial here, I'm not actually going to be coding in PHP. We're actually going to work on setting up our MySQL database, and I'm going to be explaining how to do that. So once you install a WAMP server, or a program like it, I think they have another one for Macs, uh, if that doesn't work for you, go to what's called phpMyAdmin. And if you have WAMP server, it's localhost slash phpMyAdmin. What we want to do is create a new database. So I'm going to call it PHP Tutorial 1. I already have several databases set up for my other projects. Um, so first we have a database. However, that we can't put information into that database until we have a table for it. And within a table, you can have rows, and in that row, you can store individual pieces of information. If it sounds complicated, I'll exp you'll, ex you'll understand it better as we go along. So for our first table, let's make something called posts. I'm just going to type in number of fields 10. And this is going to store um, all of our news information that you can post. Now, each column, I mean, you, you know what a table looks like. It has columns and, row, and rows. A column will, well, I'll set it up, and then hopefully you'll be able to see it better that way. The first, basically, the values we enter here are going to be the same for every piece of information we enter into this table. So, for example, every row is going to have an ID, and this is basically used for when we index the table. You don't have to have this, but I think it makes it a lot easier. Now, once you have given this field a name, you can give it a variable type. Vercare holds a string of text, and you can make it a certain length. However, for this purpose, we're going to use what's called an int, an integer, and we're going to make it 11 places long. Now, that doesn't mean you can only hold up to 11 numbers. This means 11 places, so 99,999,999. That should be enough pieces of news for your website. Now, if we scroll over a bit, uh, we have a default, which we're not going to use for this, but it will come in handy for other ones. However, we do have extra, and you can set it to what's called auto increment. This way, you won't need to set the ID every time you put something into your database, but instead, it'll automatically update it. And we also have what's called primary, and that's, again, just for indexing the database. Now, for the other fields we're going to have, we're going to have a title. We're going to have a post, and that's going to be the actual content of the news piece. We're going to have a date, a user, the person who posted it, number of views, oh, and that's it. Now, the title is going to be a string of text. We'll make that 100 characters long, and the the post is going to be actual text, and that's pretty much unlimited. The date, we're going to set that to a special type, which is called date time, and I'll explain how you use that later. The user, we're going to make that another int, 11. So you can have up to 99 million users on your website as well. And in a later tutorial, I'll talk about how to make a user, user registration system. And number of views, I'm going to do the same thing. Now there are... Oh, right. For number of views, set the default to zero, because zero views, when you first post something, would make sense. 
Now this table is all set, so let's save it. And you've made your first table in a database. Now there's nothing in this table yet, and I'll help you put stuff into it in the either the next tutorial or the tutorial after that. Now we're going to make another table. This one will be for the users themselves. So a new table called users, number of fields 10. Okay, and we're going to start with an ID. I'm going to start all my tables like that. Uh, now the user is going to have a name. We're going to make that 100 characters long. And for ID, we're going to, once again, set auto increment and primary key. Let's see, the user is going to have a password, but we're going to use what's called a hashed password. I'll explain that later, but that's only going to be 40 characters long, no matter what their password is. They're going to have an email. Um, their website, as they get a little link for in their name. Uh, let's see, their user level and the date they joined, as well as their number of posts. Sorry about that, I had a brief interruption. Okay, for the next thing, we're going to have an email uh, for the actual content. We're going to make that 100 characters long. I don't know anyone who has an email longer than that, do you? The website, I'm going to make that 300 characters long, just in case. Uh, the user level, I'm going to make that what's called a tiny integer, and that can hold up to 257 numbers. So, about three places. Unless your site is that complex, I don't think you'll need any more than that. I'm just going to make that two, so you can have up to 20 user levels, but I doubt you'll need it. Uh, oh, jointed. Uh, let's make that joined. We're going to use date time for that again. Leave the length default. Post, we're going to make an integer, 11. And for default, once again, we're going to set that to zero. And we're also going to set the user level to zero as a default. Because we assume most members will just be regular members. Okay, so now you can save that. And that's your second table. Now we're going to have one more. And that is going to be for the comments themselves. So people can comment on your news pieces and tell them tell, tell you if they, if they think they're interesting or not. So we're going to make a table called comments. Oh, yeah, and if you make more fields than you need, phpMyAdmin will automatically get rid of them in case you haven't figured that out. So the first thing, in case you couldn't guess it, id int 11 auto increment unique or primary uh, the comment itself the user who made it the post that the comment is attached to and the date when they made it now date in case you couldn't guess it that's going to be date time uh, the post since we can have up to 99 million posts we have to make this the same length and same goes for users and the comment we're just going to make text where is text? There there it is. And there are no defaults here, so you might want to set a default user, default post, but it shouldn't matter. So you can just save that. And now you have set up three tables that we will be using in our PHP. Now I'm not actually going to get into PHP in this video. That should come in the next one. Um, so that'll give you some time to install everything, and hopefully you've understood a bit about MySQL.